Hello, everyone. Welcome to Brew Jackets, the fun Blue Jackets theme podcast. My name is Kevin. Joining me tonight, we have my guy, Hefty Duck. We got my guy, Wyan. We have my guy, William. Uh, on today's show, we got a lot of stuff going on in the Blue Jackets world. Uh, Blue Jackets get a big win over the Sharks 4-2. We'll talk about that. William, ne- uh, I'm sorry, Alex Nylander. Uh, oh, you did there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Freudian slip. Yeah, Freudian slip. <laughs> but uh, Al- Alex Nylander had a two-goal night in the Blue Jackets 4-2 win. So we'll Little talk. Three points, about- yeah. Yeah, two a two-goal night against the Sharks. We'll talk about that. Uh, the Blue Jackets got screwed in Detroit. Uh, sh- you know. It- Not in a good way. Wait. Uh, yeah. Right, continue. You know, it stuff happened that should not have happened. It, we'll talk about that. Uh, we got Blue Jackets prospect Gavin Brindley news and so much more. So we got a lot of stuff to talk about, a lot of stuff going on in the Blue Jackets world. So uh, welcome to the show, everyone. Oh, yeah. yeah. Welcome in. Thanks for the intro as always, Kev. Um, it's been, uh, it never seems to be a dull week in the Blue Jackets land. Um which is just, it's amazing. You just think that, um, you know, a team at the bottom of the standings might not have as much going on, but you, you'd be wrong. I think I, I'd argue it's the people, the teams that are kind of in the middle of the standings that don't have as much going on, you know, because either at the bottom, you're rebuilding at the top, you're going for the, the, the playoffs, whatever. Anyway, welcome in, welcome in. Um, yeah, we got a lot of things to talk about today, but. For sure. Let's start about uh, Gavin Brindley because it was recently announced yesterday that Gavin Brindley uh, is the Big Ten Player of the Year. He's also their scoring champion. And I don't know if he was the points leader or not. But um, yeah, so uh, Gavin Brindley is a Blue Jackets prospect. If you don't know already, we're big fans of him here. Um, And he's playing for the University of Michigan this year. You know, Blue Jackets have also picked up other Michigan players in the past, Wierenski, Johnson, Blankenberg, um, Fantilli. <laughs> Kent Johnson, Kent Johnson, Jack Johnson. Yes, it's uh, yes, it's safe to say that uh, Michigan hockey has benefited the Blue Jackets a lot over the years, and it's certainly yeah. looking like that's going to be the case again with Blue Jackets prospect Gavin Brindley because he just continues to dominate at Michigan, and that bodes well for the Blue Jackets and his development. Yeah, right. And also, you know, he has played with Adam Fantilli in the past. Uh, he was selected after Adam Fantilli in the draft last year. By after, I mean, there's a Blue Jackets second pick in the second round. Uh, he went 34th overall. Um, Brindley did, I mean. Yeah. And, um, you know, there was arguments from people that s- said that, man, he could have been like a top 10 pick last year. He could have been, uh, he, he's, people were surprised he didn't go in the first round, but Blue Jackets, I mean, they, you know, it was it's Yarmo at work there. It is. So, um, honestly, of- honestly, Gavin, the, the story of Gavin Brindley is that uh, if you stick him in a different draft, he goes first round. But this was said a lot about last year's draft is that that was just such a, you know, deep draft. from It was stacked with talent from top to bottom that there were guys that went later on that they should have. So if you're a guy that should go first round, you go second round, a guy that should go second round goes third round and so on and so forth. And that's what happened to Gavin Brindley. So the blue jackets were very fortunate to get Gavin Brindley in the second round. Cause as every day goes by, it looks like it's a damn good pick. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. And hopefully maybe they'll have some chemistry from working together uh, previously. You know, it's not a guarantee because the NHL is just a different beast. But, you know, it's it's possible, you know, Adam Fantilli is projected to be the number one center in the future for the Blue Jackets. So that could mean, you know, Gavin Brindley might get up there, too. Um, so real quick, let's go over some uh, points. Uh, real, I also want to make a, a, a statement here. Um, NCAA, what are you thinking? Where is your head at? Why? Is Gavin Brindley not a candidate for the Hobie Baker Award this year? Did he fail some classes or something? Is that like the deal? Is it is it scholastic? Is it is it what? What do you? What's the deal 
he should be. I mean, he's literally the, the the player of the year for the Big Ten, and he's not nominated, not even a candidate. He doesn't have to win it, but like not even a possibility for. He he, he should be there because he's as well. We I have pictures of this that showed on the show later, but Gavin Brindley. Last week, it was announced he was a finalist for Big Ten Hockey Player of the Year. Yesterday, it was announced that he won Big Ten Hockey Player of the Year. And not only that, he's Big Ten scoring champion in hockey for the year. He is abs- He's top 10 in scoring in college hockey. You know, and then on top of that, we've said this on the show many times, but Historically speaking, Michigan is just really good at hockey. They are like the Ohio State or Alabama of college hockey, just always good, always fighting for playoff spots, always in the NCAA tournament, you know, Frozen Fours, Big Ten championships, national championships. That's the, that's just how good, that's just how good they are historic. That's just good. That's just how good they are historically speaking. So. For you, for there takes a certain kind of player that you have to be to play at Michigan. They don't just take anyone. You have to be good to play there. And then for him to be good enough to play there, and then you dominate at one of the best schools in college hockey, that that should say something that you're pretty damn good. And like you know, he should be there. Not even saying that he should win it, but come on, he should have some sort of consideration. Because if you dominate at one of the best schools in college hockey, that means you're pretty good, and that is bodes well for the Blue Jackets. But he should be there. But rant over. That's besides the point. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so, uh, real quick too, you can catch Gavin Brindley, uh, I believe, this Saturday, March 23rd, uh, at 8 p.m. Eastern. They're going to be playing. So Michigan, the University of Michigan, is going to be playing uh, Michigan State in the. Um, is, is it the semifinals, quarterfinals? No, this is the championship. Oh, this is the yeah of the big. This is the Big Ten championship game. Yep. Yeah. So, um, catch it on Saturday. It's gonna be a huge game. I don't know where to watch it. <laughs> I big, don't ask me. Even though I recommend watching it, but um, <laughs> check it out. It, it's gonna be uh, really cool. There's other, of course, there's other prospects. I think on both teams from other teams um, as well. You know, there's a lot of former Michigan players in the nhl right now so uh you know a couple ohio state ones too you know we gotta mention it whole columbus thing and all but um so yeah did you did you have some clips of Kevin Bridley? i do have clips but for i do have clips but first i want to just show the pictures that michigan hockey posted all over social media so the first one is Right here, as we said, Gavin Brindley won Big Ten Hockey Player of the Year. So here's the picture that Michigan Hockey posted. That was pretty badass, yeah. So that's pretty cool. So there it is. Gavin Brindley has been named Big Ten Hockey Player of the Year. So shout out to you, Gavin Brindley, Blue Jackets prospect Gavin Brindley. So that was the first picture. This is the second picture that Michigan Hockey posted, which is Gavin Brindley has also been named to first team all Big Ten. So again, Blue Jackets prospect Gavin Brindley has been named first team all Big Ten. So shout out to you, Gavin Brindley. Keep dominating at Michigan. And whenever you're ready, come join the Blue Jackets and go have some fun with your fellow teammates, including your Michigan friends. So there's that. And then, of course, Gavin Brindley has been named scoring champion in the Big Ten. So Gavin Brindley just keeps piling up all these awards. It's great to see. So good for you, Gavin Brindley. Keep going. This is just great to see. So there's that. As for the Gavin Brindley videos, Gavin Brindley scored a big goal this past Saturday night to knock out Minnesota, to help knock out Minnesota. So here is the goal. Now, one thing to – actually, no, I take it back. So here is the goal. It's right here. Gavin Brindley plays for Michigan, Blue Jackets prospect. 
and he wears number four. So here's the goal. Edwards like a dog and a bone. Edwards like a dog and a bone. Brindley now the other way in. Shoot scores! Gavin Brindley, a bullet. Michigan leads 2-0. And comes with great transition. Edwards breaks that puck up. D to D and wow, a dime right there on the stick of number four. The goaltender out to press the angle and Brindley still. Damn, little headphone warning there. <laughs> oh, well, okay, headphone warning, my bad. But we'll show it, I'm going to show it again one more time. So headphone warning, it's kind of loud, but we got to show it one more time. It's just a snipe shot by Gavin Brindley. It's just beautiful. So Gavin Brindley for the Blue Jack. Gavin Brindley from Michigan is a Blue Jackets prospect. He wears number four, and he scored an awesome goal. So here is the goal. Edwards like a dog and a bone. Brindley now the other way in. Shoot scores! Gavin Brindley, a bullet. Michigan leads 2-0. And comes with great transition. Edwards breaks that puck up. D to D and wow, a dime right there on the stick of number four. The goaltender out to press the angle and Brindley still. Just absolute beautiful shot by Blue Jackets prospect Gavin Brindley. And he's done that a lot with, with his time at Michigan. I've seen a lot of clips where he just snipes it. Because that's just the kind of the guy that he does. A lot of his goals are just snipes. That's just kind of what he does. He scores other ways too. He's kind of he's you know dirty, greasy goals too, right in front of the net. But he a lot of his goals are just snipes. Uh, here's a clip of Gavin Brindley being interviewed after the game. Gavin, in the first period, you were hemmed up, but all of a sudden, the second period, you seemed to find some space out there. What was the difference? Yeah, I don't know, just a hell of a play by our D. Um, the whole game plan was to get pucks and get them up quick, and um, fortunate enough that it went in, so it's a big one for our team, and just happy to get the job done tonight. Yeah. Gavin, you guys shut down Minnesota defensively so well. It looked like they didn't have any room out there. How did you guys do that? What was the game plan? Yeah, I just stay above. Um, they're really good on transition. Got a lot of good guys that can make plays. And um, the whole game plan against them is just stay above, uh, limit those guys from creating offense. And um, I think we did a pretty good job of tonight. And Bargo stood on his head. So heck of a game by him and um, hell of a game by us. Should be an interesting uh, matchup considering the two teams that we're going to see in the championship game Michigan State and Michigan Yeah, yeah, it'll be uh, it'll be a fun one. Um, I think we owe those guys a little bit so um, They're all the hockey team and it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be quite the game Gavin thanks for the time. We'll see you next weekend, we'll see you next weekend. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks So so there's uh, Blue Jackets prospect Gavin Brindley getting interviewed after the game when uh, his Michigan Wolverines knocked out Minnesota by winning 2-0 in the Big Ten Hockey Tournament. And like Hefty Duck said, this upcoming Saturday on Big Ten Network, go check out Gavin Brindley play at 8 o'clock Eastern time as Michigan plays Michigan State in the Big Ten Hockey Tournament Championship game. We'll be cheering for you, Gavin Brindley. Hope hope you do well. You've been playing so good this season. Keep going. And whenever you're ready, come join the Blue Jackets. Hell yeah. Yeah, I talked about this in my article um, earlier today, yesterday. About, um, so, like, there's not really a rush to get him here. He's a great player. You mm -hmm. know, I, I'd love to have him on the team. I'd love to see him and Fantilli connect for some great goals. But um, he's still young. Still in development. Uh, also, the Blue Jackets have a ton of prospects in the system. And there's going to be quite a few depth forwards. I don't think that there's going to be a rush, so to speak, to push anybody to the NHL uh, as they're, there's kind of a logjam in the defensive positioning, getting rid of trading peak, help that a little bit. Uh, but there's just there's a lot of bodies now right now it looks bad because there's a lot of injuries and you know a bunch of Cleveland monsters had to come up to the Blue Jackets 
when there's not as many people to come up to them. They, uh, the monsters had to sign two guys to uh, pay trial offers or uh, contracts, and um, just to like have enough for subs and everything, and just in case someone gets hurt there. So that's always interesting how they navigate that. Right. But and- yeah, because like we're running out of players right now. We have four play the monsters up here. Another um, another thing to consider is that sure it would be nice to have Gavin Brindley come join you know, whether it be the monsters this season because that's where he would go most likely if he if he stopped playing at Michigan or the Blue Jackets next season or even the monsters again next season that'd be good. But if he made the decision to stay at Michigan, it's not the end of the world. And that I wouldn't mind that actually because again when you're you're a school like Michigan who is historically good at hockey and they just on a consistent basis just throw out top tier NHL talent all the time it's not a bad thing for a player who plays there to spend another year developing in that program because if he did it'd be good for his development and it'd be good for the blue jacket but either way if he makes the decision to leave Michigan. It's awesome. But if he takes another, cause he's a sophomore. So if he takes another year or two to develop at spot at Michigan, that's even better. Cause I'm, you know, they're historically good at hockey and that's one of the places where you're okay with him staying an extra year or two because they're good at developing players and putting talent in the NHL. So if he does that, I'm okay with that. Yeah, same. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with getting a degree, too, because look at, um, well, we'll get to this in just a second, but look at, there's so many other players who become something else in uh, the hockey world. John Davidson, uh, you know, interim general manager, president for the Blue Jackets. He was, he's a goaltender for uh, a couple different teams, but notably the Rangers. And all sorts of other people have, have played. And so he's going, uh, Gavin Brinley is majoring in sports management. So that's pretty typical for some of the, um, you know, sports guys. Um, so yeah, let's, um, let's change gear a little bit because, um, speaking of other players who have gone on to do things in hockey, Blue Jackets very own, uh, Rick Nash, he co- he is the director of player development for the Blue Jackets, I believe. He has recently been named the general manager for uh, Hockey Canada uh, for the uh, IIHF World Junior Championship Tournament. And congrats to him. That's pretty cool. You know, get some little experience under there. I know there. I've I've definitely seen fans on Twitter um, saying how maybe the Jackets should look to him for a general manager. And while I don't disagree with that fully, what John Davidson had said, and I agree with this, is that they're going to be looking for someone with experience. They need someone with a known track record uh, to help them in this process. That's how they're going to take the next step after they've done all this retooling and rebuilding and whatnot. So that's the only thing I'd have to argue against that. Otherwise, I mean, to be fair, he has some general managing experience, just not in the NHL. So, you know, I'd be curious. And that's something else that we could talk about here in a future episode. I mean, the, the search for the general manager position has started recently. Most likely nothing's going to happen until the off season. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why it would, because especially if they're looking for someone from an organization that's currently like in the playoffs or like still playing, that's kind of weird. They don't want to leave right now. Right. Um, so, right. you know, we'll talk about that a little bit more. I just thought it was neat that Rick Nash got that nod. Um, I'm not, I'm not, not going to play it now, but uh, I'll say I got one more Gavin Brinley video, but I'm going to save it for the end of the show. Okay, cool. Um, so Kevin Brindley, let's talk about Daniel Tarasov. Now, recently, there's been some speculation, and by speculation, I mean a poll that I posted on the Brew Jackets <laughs> where I asked people who they think next year's starting goaltender is going to be. 
and I gave two, I gave three options. First option is, you know, Tarasov. Recently, he's been standing on his head. He ha- he got 39 saves and 41 shots the other night in, in San Jose. He has then uh, he also in, in Montreal. He basically had a shutout after Elvis had those first three goals went in the first six minutes, mm-hmm. and the rest of the game there was there's no goals from either team. So kudos to Montreal too. But uh, and I was just impressed by that. And and Tarasov has been looking like he's caught up to the NHL level really quick. So the next option on the poll. Elvis Smirce Leakins. And then the third option is other. So let me go over those results really quick. Uh, I don't have them in front of me. It doesn't matter. So Daniel Tarasov got like 70% of the vote. Uh, I believe Merce Leakins got somewhere around like 10 and other got somewhere around 20%. I'm not surprised by that, given the Twitter crowd and whatnot, the people we follow follow us. There's definitely some people who still believe in Elvis. I, I'm one of them. I believe that he can be great. He's shown it before. He has a proven track record. Like I was just talking about with the GM thing. It, we just haven't seen it. Not sure exactly what happened and when, but it's the second season in a row he's the worst. Yeah, statistically the worst goaltender in, in, in the league. That's rough to hear. That's rough, especially after earlier this year, Spencer Martin got put on waivers because uh, Elvis won the games. He's not a third goalie in his words. So I don't know. What do you guys think about that? Uh, the poll, the, the results, who do you think is going to get the nod next year? Honestly, it's perfectly understandable to say something like that. Because given how Danil Tarasov has played really since the old after the All Star break, it's hard to argue against that. He's played really good and he's helped the Blue Jackets win some games. There have been some games where the Blue Jackets, a big reason why the Blue Jackets won that game is because of Danil Tarasov, where he plays good, he keeps them in the he makes big saves, he keeps them in the game. And then that allows the Blue Jackets to get their feet under them and then build themselves up to where they start scoring goals and then they eventually win that game because of Danil Tarasov. Sometimes you do see it in hockey where you're not necessarily playing the greatest right away and you need some time to just kind of slowly cook. get – Yes, to, yes. sometimes you need time to cook and you need some time – to slowly get going, but once you do get going, it's it's fine. But you know that's just how it is, and that's what will happen with the Nil Tarasov. A lot of these games that the Blue Jackets have been winning, they just need a little time to get going, and once they get going, they're fine because Nil Tarasov kept them in the game and gave the Blue Jackets that chance. And then there's been times where the Blue it's been the opposite of that, where you know Nil Tarasov is pre- playing pretty good. But they don't necessarily need them because the Blue Jackets, you know, were scoring goals like crazy and they win games. So I can honestly see why people think that in the Twitter poll. And it's not just the Twitter poll. You look at just the Blue Jackets fan community and twi- on Twitter in general. That's the consensus that Danil Tarasov has play- been playing really good. And as of now, people think he's probably going to be the guy, not just now, but next season and beyond. Listen to Bob McCallaghan and, and other people in like the Blue Jackets world slash Columbus media. They say similar things. So it's really not that out of the question to see why people think that. And it's a credit to uh, Danil Tarasov for playing like that. It's just great to see. Just keep going. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not even necessarily trying to like take a stab or a dig at Elvis. It's just looking at how it is. And and I'm, I'm curious, too, because like we're not down on the ice. We don't. Like we, we catch bits and pieces of what they say sometimes through broadcasts, but you don't generally get to really hear what they're saying down there. The only thing from the goaltender you'd notice is with the end of a power play or a penalty kill, he slaps the stick. Um, 
to let them know that the guy's about to come out of the box. But they are also they're they make calls while they're on the ice. All the players do for sure, but specifically in the defensive zone, the I guess maybe it's my opinion. I don't know, but like the the goaltender is supposed to help control where what's going on, where's people at, and it just seems like, like I said I can't hear what's going on there. I don't know if maybe to uh, Daniel is more silent, louder. If Elvis stopped doing that or doesn't do it out or people aren't listening, I don't know. But I would venture to guess that the players, uh, the players react differently to who they're in front of as well. Because mm -hmm. let's take a look at the Montreal game again. Blue Jackets lost three to zero. The only three goals in the entire game from both sides were scored in the first six minutes. Elvis gets pulled. That Neil Tarasol, after four shots, he stopped one of four. And Neil Tarasov goes in, and the game just seems to change. Some people might call it boring. There's not a whole lot of scoring, but like the game changed. There was no chance from either team. I mean, if they took shots, there was chances. Tarasov played great. He kept them, kept it at three. But I don't know, man. I just find it interesting. Uh, I made the poll because there were so many people on on Twitter talking about it, and I, and I just I thought it might be uh might yeah. be the hot topic. No, and you bring up a good point there, Hefty Duck, which is, and I've seen this on Twitter too, which is this may be right or wrong. Where I'm not exactly sure, but it just feels like that the Blue Jackets just seem to play better when Danil Tarasov is in the net compared to when Elvis Merzlikens is goalie and in the net. And again, that may be right or wrong. I'm not exactly sure, but it just, it, it just feels, it just feels that way. And, and also, you know, again, this is not a dig at Elvis Merzlikens because most people are not like Danil Tarasov where you're like six, five over 200 plus pounds. So like, Dude. So like he was there for the video interview the other night, and he's yeah. like, like a like multiple like more than one head taller than me. So like he's yeah, tall. so like when you're a dude that's six five over, he's my guess. I know he's six five. I'm not exactly sure on the weight, but if I had to take a guess, he's probably at least two hundred one eighty ish. He, he, he's, a little, he's a little skinny. He's the, a little the goalie gear might might. Confused. It might it might be the goal here, but point but point being six five and close to two hundred pounds, pretty big dude. And when you you watch the games, he takes up most of the net. And if you're you're, you're opposing team playing the Blue Jackets, and you see Dylan Tarasov, you're thinking like, what the heck are you going to shoot at? You know, because he he's just so big, he takes up most of the net, and that probably helps as well. You know, because yeah. again, Elvis Merzlikens, it's no disrespect to you. Most people aren't like Danilo Tarasov, where you're like six five and almost like two hundred pounds. Yeah. So you were dead on, actually. He's two hundred one pounds. Oh, let's <laughs> go. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. And he is from Russia too. We'll talk about some of our Russian players here later, oh. maybe. There's been some hullabaloo around them too, both good and bad. But we'll get there. Because um, right now. Uh, unless you want to continue something, uh, if you have something on, on mind, I'll do the ad read. If not, well, does uh, William or Wine have anything to say about this? I mean, I was just going to say, I think there actually is some truth about how players seem to play better in front of a certain goaltender. Because even, even for my team, I feel like that's true. Because I feel like lately we've been playing better in front of Linus Allmark and kind of leaving Jeremy Swayman out to dry. But earlier in the year, it was the other way around. So, like, I don't know. Sometimes it just feels like they play better in front of a certain goalie than the other. And sometimes they just get hot. And yeah, you just gel with someone better or something. Yeah. You know, it's funny as I've actually been paying attention to the Bruins a bit because of Andrew Peake, and I would agree with what you just said there. Yeah. Um, yeah. William? William, what about the uh, poll? Uh, you know, I, I completely agree with what Wyan said. And going back to the poll, I think what I voted was, um, I think I voted for Tarasov. I did the poll. 
Because just yeah. knowing how Tarasov can be sometimes, I think if we just get him as much practice as we can, he can be a beast next year. Yeah. Um, one thing to note, too. Sorry if I interrupted you. Was there anything else you wanted to add? No, no, I had nothing else. Go ahead. One thing to note, too, is there's been a ton of trade rumors based around Elvis Merzlikens, and we discussed this previously on the channel. If there is a move, it's going to be in the offseason. Obviously, it's after trade deadline now. But also, um, he might end up not getting traded, not only because he could turn out and he could just turn it up and, and be great. He's been working hard. He's known to be a hard worker. And so maybe he just works out. He's got a big contract, and for being the statistically on the bottom of the goalies for two years in a row is going to be when teams look at that and they see like what's he making like eight million a year or something like that five like five oh that's not as bad as I thought well it's still pretty hefty pay a paycheck but right. teams look at that and they're like would you take like two and a half or something like that so I I, I believe the jackets are don't want to retain much salary anymore because i believe you know the gm is going to be coming in a new gm is going to be coming in and who knows what they're going to do they just need they need that cap space and they need you know team to be kind of how it is now so they can judge it now and fix it so whatever my point being he might just get dropped uh he might get bought out you know if he gets dropped Someone else can pick him up and then pick up his paycheck, sure. But um, if he, because he could sign somewhere else then for like a different contract too, or at the very least, the Jackets would have to retain some of that salary. That's just my opinion. I don't know what's going to happen. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> Anyway, anything? Uh, anyone else got anything about the uh, goal situation before I do the ad? Uh, yeah, let's do the ad read. All righty. Uh, let me real quick look up some DraftKings Sportsbook hockey odds. Um, and I believe tonight there is a bunch of games. Nope. Tonight, there's only going to be three games in the NHL, so we'll just spit the odds out here real quick. Uh, we know hockey games move fast, but with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NHL, you can score faster than anything happening on the ice. This week, new customers can bet 5 bucks and get 200 instantly in bonus bets. Um, some of these odds for tonight, we've got the Maple Leafs playing the Capitals. The Capitals, as of late, have been making the playoff push and doing actually somewhat decent, in my opinion. But the, uh, the the Maple Leafs are, are favored. They're minus 135 on the, on the money line, and the Capitals are plus 114. I believe it's in Washington as well. Uh, so then uh, another game for tonight is Arizona Coyotes and Dallas Stars. This is going to be at 8, 10 p.m. Uh, the Stars are favored to win this by quite a bit. They're minus 298 to the Coyotes 240. And then the third game of the night, is Minnesota Wild versus the LA Kings. I actually think the Minnesota Wild sh odds should be a little bit better than this, but they're at plus 130 for the LA Kings, 155. So uh, good luck if you're betting uh, on tonight's game or any other game or whatever. Now on March Madness, too. That's starting up next or tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to be, yeah. You Don't forget to use code THPN. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app with code THPN. New customers bet just 5 bucks in the NHL and get 200 instantly in bonus bets. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code THPN. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 100 Gambler or visit www.100gambler.net in New York. Call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino Resort in Kansas. 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See dkng.com slash hockey for eligibility and deposit restrictions. Term and responsible gaming resources. NHL and the NHL Shield are registered trademarks of the National Hockey League. Copyright NHL 2024. All rights reserved. Yeah, so. A lot of, and speaking of. Yeah. Go 
Uh, Ohio State's in the NIT, so you could go bet on that. Uh, Gavin Bears, Brindley's in the NCAA. Uh, I'm sorry, the Big Ten Championship is yeah, big, again. Big, uh, Gavin Brindley's in the Big Ten Championship. You can go bet on that. Uh, Bearcats are in the NIT. You could go bet on that. The Cavs, go bet on that. You can go bet on the crew. And the Guardians I mean, almost back up. The oh Reds are almost back up. The Guardians are almost back. The Reds are almost back. And when they come back, you can bet on that. And obviously the Blue Jackets are still playing, so you can go bet on the Blue Jackets. So a lot of stuff going on in the Ohio sports world. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely more bets than like on than like if there's just just betting on a team to win. So, you know, if you're trying to like <laughs> Bet on the Blue Jackets, you know what I'm saying. Um, but all right, so um, man, there was something I was going to bring up here, and let me see if I can find it real quick. Actually, right now might be a good time to show that other Gavin Brindley clip, clip if you don't mind, while I'm looking this up. So a little filler here for y'all. Another sick clip from the one and only Gavin Brindley, the guy we can't shut up about. No. Enough. Be- I mean, because he's you can't shut up about him because he's just he's been just that good, not just for Michigan, but it's so exciting uh, for the Blue Jackets. It it just really gets me going. But. um, So the context of this clip is that uh, Michigan on their Michigan hockey all over their uh, social media is asking the question, who has the best nickname on Michigan's hockey team? And uh, they ask a whole they ask a whole bunch of, you know, they ask everyone and everyone has a different answer. And then Gavin Brinley, he has his answer on who he thinks is uh, the best nickname on the uh, Blue Jack, I'm sorry, on Michigan's hockey page. So uh, that's what uh, this video is going to be uh, about, is it's going to be who uh, Gavin Brindley thinks has the best nickname on Michigan's hockey team. And uh, it's an eight-second clip, so it's very short. So I'll play it twice. I'll play it twice so you can see it, which... It's in the process of downloading right now, so we're going to have it pretty quickly here. (laughs) Uh, That's the way she goes. Actually, um, no, we've hyped it up so much, we got to show it now. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) I was like, well, I found what I was looking for, but um, we'll get there in just a second. Uh, Side note, though, another Blue Jackets prospect, Luca Pinelli, scored his 46th goal of the season for the Ottawa 67s. Uh, he's been killing it there. That's the QMJHL. Yeah. Or the OMJ? No, yeah, no, yeah. no, no. Ontario Hockey League. Oh, oh wait. Okay. But anyways, um, okay. So the Gavin Brindley video is here. It's an eight second clip, and the context is Blue Jackets prospect Gavin Brindley answering the question of which player on Michigan's hockey team has the best nickname, and this is Gavin Brindley's answer. So here it is. Gilmore. Uh, that's nickname, Tyler Duke, the Wild Man. Evan Haller. <laughs> so we'll play it one more time so you can see it. This is what Gap Blue Jackets prospect Gavin Brindley says for who has the best nickname on Michigan's hockey team in Gavin Brindley's opinion. Gilmore. Uh, that's nickname, Tyler Duke, the Wild Man. Evan Haller. So there it is. There it is. Wow. Dude, get this. Okay, never mind. Sorry, I'm I'm still stuck on Luca Pinelli for just a second. Um Luca Pinelli. An Ottawa six uh six sevens. He is their captain, by the way. Sixty five games played this season. There's only three more games left. Forty six goals, thirty three assists for a total of seventy nine points. That is a greater than one point per game average. From a Blue Jackets prospect, uh, he's got 40 penalty minutes though, and in uh, 65 games, that's uh, that's quite a bit, uh, you know. Like, damn, 
comparing it to Gavin Brindley for this last for this season, he had um half the amount of games. Yeah, you no, know he had 20, 22 uh, penalty minutes, so half the amount of games, twenty two. That'd be about forty. Yeah, these these kids, man, they'll learn to control it. I'm sure, and once yeah. they get to the NHL, I, no. uh, yeah. all right. I take uh, I take that I take that back. I get I, it was actually two because one just downloaded, just popped up. So it's, it's a quick 10 second video. It's Gavin Brindley celebrating with his team after they beat Minnesota. So here it is. <laughs> that was pretty funny. I'll, I'll, play it one, I'll play it one more time. So Gavin Brindley is a prospect for Michigan. Uh, is a prospect for the Blue Jackets. He plays at Michigan, and he's number four. So when you're watching this video, pay attention to number four. That's Gavin Brindley. So there's Blue Jackets prospect Gavin Brindley uh, celebrating with his team after a win. Hell yeah. So. We're gonna, I, we got, I think we got to talk about the change. win against the Sharks, too. Yeah. Well, and, and this is going to lead right into it, too. Yeah. Alex Nylander. Yeah. Like, where did this guy come from? What yeah. is going on? Why does he have this chemistry with the team? Why does he have the chemistry with the top line, with Cole Sillinger, with that? That's like the third line or whatever. And, like, what – why is it so sustained? I can understand, like, you know, having a couple of great games, sure. Um, I mean, looking at who we traded for him, I mean, Bemstrom. Bemstrom has like one goal right now, maybe two. I, I think it's just one. And, you know, the whole condition is that the six round pick will turn to a third if he gets six goals or something, whatever. I don't. Well, I'm not banking on that by any means because just the fact we got a pick and this Nylander guy, and he's been directly responsible for some wins already. Dude, the other night, this guy had three points. And this is the this is the uh, San Jose game, right? Mm -hmm. Where he had two assists. I'm sorry, he had one assist and two goals. For to for a multi point game night, like dude, he's this guy's had more multi point games in his first like twelve games than like anybody else in Blue Jackets history. Mm -hmm. Actually, he has more goals scored and more points scored than any other Blue Jacket in the history of the Blue Jackets after like from when they joined the Blue Jackets. That includes players who are like huge names because that includes traded players too. Mm -hmm. That includes Rick Gaudreau, Rick Na like Rick Nash. Name. Yeah, that includes so many big names. It's like like Artemi name. Panarin. Yeah. Yep. yep. Name a player that name a good player that's been on the Blue Jackets over the years. Rick and, Nash. And he beat them. Right. Right. Rick Nash, Johnny Gaudreau, or Cam Atkinson, Artemi Panarin, Pierre Luc Dubois. You can just go down the list and all, all those. Brand. And Oliver Bjorkstrand, and you just go down the list. And all of those guys started out good with the Blue Jackets, and they had good careers with yeah. the Blue Jackets. But they were not able to do what Alex Nylander has been able to do with the Blue Jackets, which is in your first 11 games, score eight goals, have two assists, no, three assists for 11, po 11 points. Yeah. Eight goals, three assists, yeah. Eight goals, three assists for 11 points. That is just outstanding. Considering when you can do that, when no one, all the good players the Blue Jackets have had, they haven't been able to do that. That's awesome. Now, it's kind of a small sample size. It's great to see, but it'll be interesting to see if he can just keep this going. But the way he's playing, he's probably earned himself a contract with the Blue Jackets, and then it'll be interesting to see if he can keep this going. As for where I, why now, I'm not exactly sure. But if I had to take a guess, he 
might be just a late bloomer. Sometimes it just takes guys to get go time to get going. And once yeah. they get going, it's hard to stop. And I also think that the last two seasons, he's been in the minor leagues a lot. And when yeah. you're in the minor leagues a lot, there are benefits to that, which is you can just be there. You can just play games, focus on you and develop your game and just slowly cook. And when your time comes, you'll be much better because you had that chance to play all those games rather than just being that guy that just, you know, maybe plays like two or three games, then gets healthy scratched for like one or two, then comes back and plays another two or three games, then gets scratched back. That that consistent of being scratched, then playing some, then not playing some and just going back and forth. That's not really the greatest thing for yeah. you as a player and your development. But when you're given the chance to just play down in the minors for two seasons, you can just focus on you and just develop your game. And my opinion, if I had to take a guess, I think that's probably what has happened with Alex Nylander is that the Penguins gave him a chance to just develop his game in the minors. And then when he's come to the Blue Jackets, he was more ready and more prepared to just play better with the yep. Blue Jackets. And that might just have to go into why he's played so well on that third line with, you know, Cole Sillinger and, you know, Kent Johnson, and then continue to play well on the third line when Kent Johnson went out. And then when he's been bumped up to the first line with Johnny Gaudreau and Boone Jenner, he's played good as well. And I just, you put all those things together and I just think that's why he's played so good. And like you said, he had a, a two goal night to help the Blue Jackets beat the Sharks four two. And the first goal he scored was just a snipe, just a great shot. Yeah. The empty net goal. So Keep going, Alex Nylander. It's just great to see. Just keep dominating. Yeah, dude. So this guy. So like, I want to talk about a little bit like where he came from and also why that, and then we're gonna have to start moving along here. Um. So first of all, he was born March second. So his birthday was earlier this month. We wish him happy birthday already. Um. He's a young guy, but it's not like he's like a fresh green face. He's twenty six years old. So um. Also, I'm getting some echo through someone's mic here. Um, so he shoots right. He's from Calgary, Alberta. So he is William Nylander's brother. And also his, his dad, Michael Nylander, played 15 seasons in the NHL as well. So he's had this hockey culture around him since he, um, since he was born, basically. And then he also has... His brother, who's been uh, one of the top players for Toronto, the Toronto Maple Leafs, who also says he's very pretty uh, proud of him and everything. Uh, Nylander has only had one kind of a prolonged period in the NHL, and that was when he played for the Chicago Blackhawks in 2019-2020, which we all know how you know the season went there. So he played 65 games that year. He had 10 goals and 16 assists for 26 points. Currently, he's two goals away from that 10 goals right now in 13 games in about a fifth of the games. So he's been uh, his time on ice has gone up from the averages he was getting before uh, 13 minutes, 12 minutes to, to 16 minutes. And I think he's just been given that chance that he needed because on the Blackhawks, like, I mean, 2020, I don't remember like how like really good they were at the time, but I don't think they were like. They, they, that was the last time they made the playoffs because they knocked out Edmonton. And right. Then, then the following round, they got knocked out by Vegas. And so there just really wasn't, it's not, not the best litmus test, so to speak, um, with that team. Uh, you know, so we'll see. I mean, maybe things just clicked here. Maybe it's, it happens. You see it all the time with other players. They go somewhere and they, and they do great things. Um, so anyway. That's all I just want to bring him up. Speaking of players who go places, Wyan has a clip for me. Um, or did. Let me see if I still got it up here. So, Andrew Peak was another player that was traded. Where is it? This is it? Yes. Andrew Peak uh, was recently traded by the Blue Jackets, and he had a pretty nice... 
uh, assist the other night to... Yep. Sorry, I'm going to try to get this up while I'm talking. To who? Yeah. Who was this assist for? It was to John Beecher. Okay, okay. Thank you. Uh, so, yeah, I just want to play this clip real quick for you. Okay, maybe not. Here we go. Good pass. Wait, what number is more context? What number is right what there? Right Pika is 52? He's 50, he's 52. Same, same as Corrali when he was here. Nice. I like that. <laughs> I like that. That's pretty cool. So um, for our audio listeners, because there's not much audio here, Peek's down on the glass, like close to you, heading left to right down the ice. And they're playing the Philadelphia Flyers. Flyers. And Peek is getting the, the puck right up against the wall, and he's about to pass this inwards. Peek. Boom. And just finds him. It's an open net. Yeah, I love the way he moves his feet on it. Yeah, that's one thing I like about, I've always liked about Peak is I never really, I don't think you could accuse him very much about standing still. No. Like he was always on the move. He might not be in the the right position every single time, but he's always on the move. He's always a hard worker. And he's a tough guy too. Yeah, how do you I guys, mean, I... uh, how do you feel about him so far? Yeah, I like the way he pl he's he's played for us. Um, on top of that assist, he's he's been very physical. He's had six hits and also eight blocks in, in his three games here. So I mean, I love the way he plays. I mean, I think that's definitely something we needed from yeah. our defenseman. And you know, and I know Zach was jokingly giving you shit for the <laughs> trading trading for Andrew Peak, but like. You legitimately did get something good there because he's a you know Andrew Peak. What he is good at, he's physical. He hits, and he's good at blocking shots. And he eats pucks. It, there have been yeah. there have been there have been games that the Blue Jackets have won, or in part because Andrew Peak just took like two, two or three like big blocks, and he just ate the puck, and that was the end of the play, right there. And some. Yeah. Sometimes he doesn't really score a lot of offense, but when he does, it's usually it's a usually a pretty good shot. Yeah. So hard shot. It's, it's a hard, hard shot. So that's what you get from Andrew Peak is just a dude that sometimes scores a goal here and there, and he's really good at just physicality, hitting, and you know he just just block shots like crazy, and it's just great to see. And it's good to see that he played good for the Blue Jackets, and he's playing good for the Bruins. Yeah. yeah, I believe I believe in that Philly game. He actually had three blocks on the same penalty kill. Like, oh, he was yep. also... damn! <laughs> that's, that's awesome. That's Andrew Peak right there. He's he's done that. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah! So uh, while while we're kind of on the topic of some like other team stuff, why don't you tell us about Ohio State legend Mason Lori? Has he been doing anything great for the uh, Bruins lately? Yeah, I mean, definitely a quieter week for Mason Lori, but I mean. He did yeah. have an assist against the Penguins on Saturday. Nice. So that's good. I mean. We hate the Penguins. But, you know, he's he's a rookie, so it's not like he's going to be lighting up the score sheet every week. But, you know, he's just sure. still playing up. He's still playing up here. Still playing pretty good, I think. I mean. Good to hear. Hell, yeah. Well, we're kind of at that time. So, Wyan, do you have anything else you'd like to add to the show today? Or, you know, do, do your shout-outs, whatever. Um, yeah, I'll just – I'll do my shout-outs. Um. Follow me on Twitter at Bruins Lion. Um, shout out to William who had to leave early. Um, you can follow him at that one CBJ fan on Twitter and TikTok. And he does our TikTok for us too. Go check us out. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, William. Because you know we're you know we're older. What we're like we're hip. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're old millennial types. You know. We don't necessarily get this like TikTok stuff, you know. It is what it is. So like, we need someone that's younger that actually gets it, like Williams. So that's why. <laughs> yeah, he's the intern. <laughs> also, join an FHL team. Claim an FHL team. <laughs> Do it. Yeah. Nope. You got anything else, man? 
no, that's it for me. <laughs> All right, Kevin, I'll leave it off for you. Okay, so um, I wanted to show this on the show last week. I just wasn't able to do it, which is a couple weeks ago when uh, Wisconsin was playing Ohio State in the Big Ten Hockey Tournament. Uh, William Blue Jackets prospect William Whitelaw scored a goal. So uh, this is, it's a clip of that from the Blue uh, Wisconsin Hockey's Instagram page. So I'm going to show that two times. So here's the video. <laughs> This one is not loud. I checked on this one. So, <laughs> you know, I don't have to worry about the headphone warning. So it, here it is. Blue Jackets prospect William Whitelaw, who wears number eight for Wisconsin, scored a goal for Wisconsin against Ohio State in the Big Ten Hockey Tournament. Here is the video. Oh, yeah. For our audio listeners right now, it's showing the William Whitelaw's sweet suit. Do you know what was in the inside of that? Oh, yeah. Do you remember the inside oh. of Fantilli's of the draft? Then he had like all like, like Actually, names of people who helped him out. Yeah. Uh, no, okay. Actually, looking at this video, um, it's William Whitelaw scoring a goal, but it's against Notre Dame, but not Ohio State. Oops. Uh, okay. It's, yeah, right. it is what it is. Um, Andrew Peake's former Andrew alma mater. Peake's former school. So you know what? For the heck of it, my bad. But I'll still show it one more time, and I'll see if I can quickly get the other video up. What is exactly on the inside? It's kind of it's really small for me here. I don't have a, a full screen on the inside. I'll have to find that. I'll post about it here later. Some point. I won't. I will, I will forget. I know as soon as I get off the episode. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> shit. Anyways. Um, okay. So <clears throat> like I like like you should, you know. Uh anyway, so you know. Like, share, subscribe to the YouTube channel. You should totally do it. It helps out our show a lot, you know, big time. It is greatly appreciated if you follow and subscribe and like and share our YouTube page. That is greatly appreciated. Hell yeah, brother. So, yeah, you should uh, totally. You should totally. We're trying to push our YouTube right now, too. That's that's the way it is. Uh, anyways, like I always do on the show, it is uh, a picture. It's a picture of my brother's dog Cooper, who is a very good dog. And uh, I saw I saw him recently. He was it was fun. Great, it was great to see. So. <clears throat> there's there's Cooper, my brother's dog. He's a great dog. Um, you know, can't forget about William and yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, can't forget about <laughs> William and his awesome suit. It just apps looking absolutely just uh beautiful. <laughs> great suit, it's, great suit. It, it 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 truly is. It is a great suit. So uh, there's that. The video is in the process of downloading. It's it's almost there. So so there's William. Uh, let's see here. What else can I do? Okay. So you know, what a fun picture this was. You know, it's throwing actually it in the background, background right here. Yep, see it, see it in the background? It's right there. I know. I, if, people are, if you're on your phone, sorry, it's real small, I know. But. Yeah. but I'll put it back up on the screen so you can see it. So this is, of course, from the home opener for the Blue Jackets. And uh, we were all there and we met up. Of course, there's me and there's Happy Duck and there's Owen. And uh, there's the man of truth, Artsy, as well as the Diamond Dog champion, Harry. And uh, his good friend Scott, 
and we all took we all took a picture outside of the uh, Blue Jackets game before the home opener, and it, it was awesome. So it was a good time. It, it it was it was a good time. If you got a hockey card from me, shout out shout it out on our Twitter or something. Let me know. That's that's I'd right. Who... That's right. You were giving <laughs> out uh, hockey cards that day. Yeah. I'll be doing it at the uh, end of the season too. Be there yeah. April sixteenth. I uh, yep. I'm going to be there too. Uh, so we're almost there. Video is <laughs> is downloading. Oh, jeez. Okay. So there's that. So good picture. And then I thought this was interesting. I saw a concept of what different logos might be for the uh, stadium series that the Blue Jackets are getting next year. So I saw this on Instagram. So here's the picture. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Stadium series. It's going to be a good time. It's, um, I'm looking forward to it. It's just, it's just going to be great. I just, I'm so excited for it. Anyway, it a lot of cool concepts right there. It's it's just awesome. So, <clears throat> and speaking of that, you know the Blue Jackets are getting an outdoor hockey game and got to play that video that the Blue Jackets posted to promote the outdoor game, which is just excited and. Really gets me going. I don't know what the heck happened to it, but you know what? We'll forget some other time. Uh, <laughs> we'll post it on our on our Twitter. That one we probably will remember to do because we're pretty obsessed with that. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. Anyway, so <clears throat> what you got for us? Isn't oh my god, the, oh, don't, dead, don't. the dead space is killing me. I know, I know. <laughs> don't, 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 don't do this. Oh man, oh. Oh. um, is it the oh. one you posted? Is it the one you posted on Union Blue Soldier? Yeah, dude, yeah, dude. here, I'll just share it. I'll put it up on the screen. Put it up on the screen. I should have, you know, I should have done. But it was almost there. No and, worries. Let's so, uh, share screen. This one. All righty. So. Okay. So the con again, this, like I said earlier, the context is Uni Blue. Uh, I'm sorry. William Lightlaw, who wears number eight for Wisconsin, is a Blue Jackets prospect, and he scored a goal against Ohio State in the Big Ten Hockey Tournament a couple weeks ago. So here it is. We'll play it two times. Oh, yeah. High five with the ref there a little bit. That was kind of funny. Did you see that? Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't think he did it on purpose, but he also didn't try try to not hit him. Wait, wait, wait. Hand out. Boom. He like <laughs> he kind of like high five the ref there. I mean, the ref wasn't trying to obviously. He was just making the call like, but. That's All right. Cool. Okay. Actually, I found I found the the video for the outdoor hockey game, so I'll play that quickly. So here it is. The Blue Jackets are getting an outdoor game March 2025, and I'm so excited for it. <laughs> it's just gonna be great. So here's the video that the Blue Jackets posted to promote the game. Yet I'm playing it one more time. So good, so good. Excited, hi. So that's the video that the Blue Jackets posted to promote. 
the Blue Jackets getting an outdoor game. I'm just so excited. It's just going to be great. Uh, I'm going to be there. It, it's just going to be great. Um, the next march that Union Blue Soldiers does will be this upcoming October for the home opener. And I've been preparing for that like crazy. And I got a new banner. And it just looks so awesome. So and this is what it looks like. So here it is. As you can see, it's a blue banner, blue background, Union Blue Soldiers, March of the Union Army. That's the name of the march that we do. And it's in big white letters and Union Blue Soldiers letter, uh, Union Blue Soldiers logo and our Facebook and our Twitter, the hashtag. So that's pretty damn cool. I'm just so excited for it. And I'll be getting it next week. So it looks pretty dang cool to me. And I'm just, I'm excited. This is, this is just great. Anyways, so <clears throat> let's see here. Oh, one last thing for me is like I do every time, you know, go check out Uni Blue Soldiers, a fun Blue Jackets themed fan group that I help run. It's a lot of fun and you should totally check it out and you can get to do cool stuff like our marches and a whole bunch of other fun stuff that we have planned, not just now, but for the future. It's just going to be great. And I'm looking forward to it. So excited. Hell yeah, brother. Dope. Well, that's a show for y'all. I appreciate y'all coming by. I like all of you who listen to us on wherever you get your podcast from. Thanks for watching the the YouTube, Facebook, whatever, wherever you're at. We appreciate you. We will be back here again, uh, same place, same time next week, 6 p.m. Wednesdays. Uh, there's not a game next week, is there? No, there is no more Wednesday games this season. The Sweet Blue Jackets. Pie. The Blue Jackets got done with that when they played the Rangers on that Wednesday in February. They're Good. done. There is no yeah. more. There is no more games on a Wednesday this season. The for the show Blue. will then be, you know, 6 p.m. Wednesdays as always. Um, yeah, that's all I got for today, too. I appreciate y'all coming out. Yep. I'm trying to think of like one. There was like something I wanted to bring up earlier, but Johnny Gaudreau got the latest. He's the latest. Oh, yeah. Happy. That's a good one. Oh, so. yeah. Yeah. And that was a game where like any of the three top stars probably could have got it, but right. right. I'm glad Johnny yeah. did. But. Yeah. All right. I'm we'll going to close this soon. out with some mascot shenanigans and then we can get out of here. <laughs> ah, take that. <laughs> uh -huh. All right, now we'll see. <laughs>